the favorite heading into the week. Youth got scratched, trained by Bob Baffert, who anybody you know who knows anything about horse racing knows that name. Probably the best trainer in the sport. So now Mystic Dan, who won the Derby, is now the favorite. And uh, do do you feel like that should be the case? Do you think Mystic Dan is the horse to beat in this race? Well, I, I would say yes. He probably should is deserving to be the favorite at this point, but not necessarily at the price he's going to go off at. We see him five to two on the morning line. The revised morning line has him at eight to five now. He's going to be bet down pretty heavily in this spot. I would be surprised if he doesn't go off around four to five or even money here. And to me, that is just way too short. You know, we always talk about. If you, go, if you miss the wedding, don't go to the funeral. Well, when he's 20 to 1 in the Kentucky Derby, that's the wedding, right? The funeral is when he's even money in the Preakness the next time out. And it's just one of those opportunities where you get the chance to bet against a horse who just shouldn't be that price. If you look at Mystic Dan's four stakes efforts, he's never been shorter than 4.7 to 1. And now you're going to have to swallow him as a short favorite in a field where he's turning back on two weeks. You've got three other contenders in here who are coming off much longer layoffs that I think are really intriguing that are going to be fresh for this race. And you also have Mystic Dan coming off a perfect trip where everything went right. The 12 out of 10 ride, chef's kiss, absolutely beautiful. What's the chances that happens again, right? If it does, okay, he's got a shot at winning. Yeah, he's the most likely winner, but he doesn't win the race 50% of the time. And that's why I think it's such a great betting opportunity. Let's go lightning around here for a minute and just kind of rattle off some bets for the, the true degenerates that are out there with the pen and pencil. So uh, bets to just to win the Preakness. We'll do the, the exotics afterwards in like 10 seconds. Uh, I'm going to bet imagination as long as I get higher than three to one. And then I'm going to throw a, a little bit of a flyer on the two horse Uncle Heavy 20 to one on the morning line. Uh, just a little snippet on there to see if we can get a long shot home. OK, uh, exotic bets for the Preakness specifically. And then we'll do undercard afterwards or we'll do the uh, the Black Eyed Susan. So a super anything else you got that's not a win bet for the Preakness in about 15 seconds. I'm going to play a trifecta three nine with three eight nine with three eight nine in the Preakness. And I'm play a superfecta. Nine with two, three, five, eight with two, three, five, eight with two, three, five, eight in the Preakness as well. Do you want to get your thoughts on the Preakness? Uh, who, who do you like to win the race and, and anything that you're betting? What's on your card? So best outcome for me, and it's not close, is um, the eight uh, Tuscan Goad. Uh, bet into him in the fixed odds pool uh, oh. before. Uh, Muth got scratched just because he was the only horse that I could see with, uh, uh, you know, somewhat of uh, an interesting, you know, kind of underpriced path. I think the favorite Mystic Dan is getting is going to be wildly overbet by the time we get to the post. Um, I don't love his chances here to repeat. I think that this is a pretty live field and he's going to have to go toe to toe pace wise with, uh, Im, you know, imagination um, over the first half of this race. And that's going to open the door for a stalker, a pace, uh, pace presser like uh, Tuscan Gold, and if you didn't know, don't know who Tuscan Gold is, and you, are, but you do have a little bit of a, a reference of, um, you know, horse racing. He's like exactly in the mold of the early voting and the cloud computing, uh, oh, which are Chad Brown I horses. A lot of cloud computing. That was good. Ch you yeah, remember? Good. So Chad yeah. Brown has yeah. a three-year-old. He thinks he's he thinks this this, this is a special horse, right. but he's not ready to derby. run the Derby. Not ready yep. to run in a huge field like that. But a shorter, a mile and three sixteenths, a little extra time to get him prepped. We'll save him for the Preakness. Well, that's Tuscan Gold this mm. year. So it uh, would be very fun if uh, he can repeat history and get his third Preakness in the last handful of years and uh, and, and stop the Triple Crown Brit a bit of Mystic Dan. A AL MVP. I mean, we were talking a little bit before the show about Judge. We were talking Tucker yesterday. How do you see this market right now? Is there like a guy or two that maybe you bet recently or that you're leaning towards maybe placing a bet on? I definitely think, like Ken said, there's we have a core. Like we have a core group of guys at this point. Uh, I personally would pick Tucker or Adley still. Judge is on a tear. He's on a heater. Maybe he just wins. My problem with him is that he already was complaining about injuries before opening day, before the season even started, before he even saw a pitch. And he was saying, oh, well, this toe thing, going to deal with it all year. And, oh, you know, I had that ab injury last year, too. So my problem with him is we've only ever seen one truly healthy season from Aaron Judge. Again, maybe he wins. Maybe he just makes me look like an idiot. He's not for me for that reason. I'd rather go with Tucker or somebody else like Adley. But, I mean, I think like Ken's right, we have a core group here, whereas the NL, it's Otani, who I don't think can win because he's a DH and voters are sick of him. And it's Mookie and it, that too. And maybe it's like maybe Ellie De La Cruz goes 35 and 100, and people go, ooh, history. 
and maybe he gets in that race. But I think AL, we definitely have a core, and it's really interesting. And like Ken said, it's happening right now. Judge hit a double already. He almost had another homer, and he's a monster. He's unbelievable. So, like, what's – and I, PJ, I want your order, too, here. And I say this, like, I guess maybe I'll do mine at the end. But, Jake, like, just because because you were the last one that spoke here. Like, so order those guys. Like, let's toss Altuve, right? Like, let's have our core group here. Let's have both Orioles, both Yankees, and Tucker. And order them one to five of, like, how do I want to do it? Who you think the most likely to win is, I guess, maybe would even be the right way to do it. Not even, like, best bet right now because it might just be the longest price. Like, most likely to win AL MVP with those five players. So both Orioles, Rutschman Gunner, both Yankees, Soto Judge, Kyle Tucker. What would, like, your order be most likely to win? I think most likely to win in my brain, uh, obviously, as I'm the one saying it. I still think it's Soto in the lead well because played. he like because in the second half Soto goes nuclear year after year yeah. like he's good in the I first half Soto and then the second half he's unbelievable yeah. like he just flips yeah. the switch so I think it's Soto one for me maybe I'm biased because I love him so much I think Tucker's too because I legitimately think he could go forty home runs thirty stolen bases and he's just so good. And me and Ken talked about it. The Astros schedule over the next month is insanely easy. So I think he's about to put up a ton of counting stats. Then I think it's judge three and gunner four, Adley five. Yeah, I think that's actually, so that's like really close to what I would have a PJ. Are you close on that order? A little bit. So I agree with you guys. that Soto's at the top. Do you think it all, and I know MVP is an individual award, but don't you think it hurts Tucker the fact that we think of the Astros as essentially the Chiefs of the MLB and they're just terrible right now? Like, does that hurt them at all? I mean, it's, but you're not making a bet for like we're not having the vote today. I think that's Jake's argument. So like, right, you're right. a bet on Tucker. To your point, PJ, though, a bet on Tucker is a bet that the Astros are going to look much different than they look right now. If they look like how they look now and the numbers are close between players, I always think. In, and I, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I. I feel pretty confident about saying this. Like in baseball awards, I always think team success isn't a core component. It's a tiebreaker. So like if someone's way better, it doesn't matter that the team sucks. But if teams are, if guys are close, it's like, ah, but he plays on the winning team. So it's like toy, it's like way better that way. So I think you, it only comes into play if you have this very close race. But if one of these guys runs, like if the Astros are 500 and all, and the Orioles and Yankees are awesome, but Tucker's the best player, I think he'll just win. But I think the biggest thing for me, PJ, is anything that's opponent driven with the schedule is it's all built on these massive assumptions that just seem like a waste of time to me to build on. Because if you go through mm-hmm. so the, uh, you know, the 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 paragraph that's always written is like, but then weeks nine to 13, they have five teams that made the playoffs last year. Be like, cool. The playoff teams turn over by half every year. And every team you think is going to be good is bad and bad is good. So like, oh, from nine to 13, they play five football games. That's basically what you're saying. They play five football games. Like you just, cause you just don't know anything like absolute, like your life depended on it. So I, here, like, let me try to pitch it where there's actually a reward here as opposed to just you don't, you get to keep your life. <laughs> like, let me make sure it's, there's a reward. Like, if I said, hey, uh, I'm like, you know, you are being held over a volcano and you 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 are choosing to take part in this exercise. This is like some kind of weird game show that would be in like Japan or something. So you're you're over the volcano, you're over the lava, and you, like, you're willing to take the risk that I'm going to name a team that I am 100% confident is going to win 10 or more games this season. And if I'm right, I get a million dollars. And if I'm wrong, I'm into the lava. Like, would you agree to do that with any team? No. Maybe the Chiefs, if somebody was really hard up for cash. That was the one that came to mind. Like, maybe I get the million here. Like, Mahomes gets hurt. Ah, is it worth going into the lava? Like, I don't know. It's a million dollars. Any, even San Francisco, like who's like a really stable kind of known quantity, any other team, I would never agree to that kind of an arrangement. It's just the randomness of all of this. So the idea that you're going to go through a schedule and be like, oh, well, they draw, they draw Cincinnati and then they draw Green Bay and then they draw this. Great. Both those teams could suck all the time. We have no idea. <laughs> so the, you're like inventing these narratives that go through this. Well, they're going to lose that. And then they're really up against it because they go to. No, actually, none of that, probably. And I don't know how it's wrong, but it's definitely wrong. Definitely wrong. So like we this is all wrong. We just don't know how it's wrong yet. But it's probably none of this is probably what we think. <laughs> like does, you know, Houston 
How many schedule threads last year would have been like, well, and then they draw the Texans and their rookie quarterback. Yeah, cool. You get smashed in that game, actually, is how it works. Because CJ Stroud's really good. Like, I just, oh, you draw the Patriots and Belichick's always tough. Not terrible. Really bad. Gonna lose, gonna win that game by a million, actually. It's just, you could do this with half the teams. The Jets. So just, it How all, many teams? Yeah, the yeah. Jets. <laughs> Which, again, I mean, it's not the... like, oh, well, who knew? Well, I don't know. That's right. the idea. Who knows? So, like, when you're trying to build in these, like, oh, that's really difficult. So, here, here's what I did, PJ. Got, hopefully, you'll appreciate it. So, there's a lot of content today. I had Alex group all of it together and send it to me. Because, look, like, mm -hmm. you you write about the NFL. You cover the NFL. This is a big deal. Like, you you, you should want to write about this stuff. It's really interesting to write about. But the analysis, I'm always like, does that matter? Like, it's one thing to say, like, they play six night games. It's another thing to be like, oh, their fatigue is going to be crazy because they got it. Like, okay, well, that's analysis. That's not really, like, maybe their fatigue's fine. Like, you don't you don't know that. You just know about the days off. So I went back to last year. And I tried to read as many of the schedule analysis pieces as possible. Because, like, all right, you're going to read the stuff this year? You want to know if it matters a lot? Let's see what everybody said last year about how tough the schedules were. And, like, does that matter? You know what the consensus easiest schedule was? And, like, and this is, I say consensus, there's a lot of disagreement about how to measure this stuff. So, like, you may find the one piece that says a different team. I think I got it here. You know, you want to guess who the easiest, like, oh, easiest schedule. You would have bet over on this team if you had followed this analysis. You want to guess who it was last year? I'm guessing it was a team out of the NFC South. I'd probably go with, like, the Saints. It was 100% the Saints. You know what my favorite win total under was last year? The Saints. Saints. You know why? Because the schedule created the market, and Derek Carr's the freaking quarterback, and Dennis Allen's the coach. A great bet was created actually by going the opposite way of the schedule in that situation. Oh, a team that's actually brutal got a good schedule. Awesome. Xander Shoffley got the lead in the first round. Great. Can't wait to do the opposite. Can't wait.